Hi everyone, my name is Sascha. I'm a customer engineer for almost five years now here at Google. I'm based in Munich and I'm here today to talk about getting started with Dataflow templates. Before we start talking about Dataflow and templates, I would encourage you to watch the getting started with Apache Beam video first to get a better understanding of what we are talking about in this video. So what is Google Cloud Dataflow? Dataflow is a fully managed service for building and managing data processing pipelines. Dataflow takes care of all the infrastructure and operational overhead that comes with running a data processing pipeline. This lets you as a user uh, focus on developing and deploying your pipelines without having to worry about servers or any other infrastru infrastructure aspects. Dataflow is also uh, a scalable and reliable service, especially scalable whenever you are dealing with bounded or unbounded sources. Um, Dataflow can automatically scale up and down based on uh, the needs of the pipeline. And on the other hand, it's also cost effective, meaning uh, it follows a pay as you go pricing model. So you only pay what your pipeline actually uses. So essentially, it's a managed service that lets you develop Apache Beam pipelines and run them on Google infrastructure. And then the question is, what is a Dataflow template? A Dataflow template is a reusable package of code that lets you deploy pipelines with customized parameters. So you can build pipelines in a reusable way and are able to discover data processing logic that someone else within the company or outside the company has already built. So what are the benefits that templates add? On the one hand side, if you have the needs, uh, like in that scenario, for instance, you wanna build and share pipelines that are developed by a central team. You want to enable business users to launch pipelines which are non-coding personas, or you wanna schedule jobs using cloud native services. The solution could be to separate the, the actual development of pipelines and the execution so that on the one hand side, the central platform team could be able to develop the pipelines and users that need those pipelines uh, can then execute it with, with their own specific parameters. Two benefits that the, the templates add are on the one hand side, as I said, the re reusability. It's not just that uh, one person develops a pipeline and is able to use the pipeline. Um, actually, the, the pipeline can be used multiple times, which results in saving time and effort. And on the other hand, uh, it provides consistency. Uh, the templates ensure more or less that the, the pipelines are uh, executed in a consistent manner. There are two types of templates. On the one hand side, we do have uh, traditional templates and we do have flex templates. Uh, we will talk about them individually right now. Uh, traditional templates are from the development flow a little bit different than the flex templates. So a developer is creating a pipeline. Uh, test the pipeline, and then once the, the person is satisfied, uh, it creates a template uh, containing all the, the libraries and dependencies that are necessary and stores the template on an object store like uh, cloud storage. People are then able to, to refer to the template and use the template whenever they need it. So they are able to specify their own parameters and start, start the pipelines individually. Uh, whenever you implement such a traditional pipeline, um, you have to use the so-called value provider uh, class. 
Um, so instead, if we have a word count example and we have an input file, uh, which is basically a string that refers to a file location, you, you have to use the, the value provider class. And whenever you submit the pipeline, you have to add the template location so that data flow is able to locate the template and run it afterwards. There are a few limitations. So whenever you um, are whenever you are developing uh, traditional templates, uh, you need to make sure that the the IOs for connecting and storing data uh, support the the value provider class. And another limitation is that the the job graph itself is static, so you are not able to. Um, have a dynamic job graph based on certain parameters whenever the um, template is submitted to run. The second type of template is the uh, flex template. The development flow here is a little bit different. Um, person is developing a pipeline, tested, and is fine with the, with the results. Um, so at the end, a template uh, metadata file is created on a cloud storage and a, a Docker, Docker image of the pipeline uh, is stored in a container registry. And you're then able, the users that are, are then able to refer to the template file and are able to submit the code to execute the, the actual beam pipeline. And the build and execute part of the template would look like the following. Uh, so you would use the gcloud command line tool where you would uh, use the build command to create the template spec file, uh, which sits at a cloud storage bucket at the end. And whenever you want to run the pipeline, you're referring to that template spec file and are then able to, to run the pipeline. From an advantages point of view, compared to the traditional templates, um, there's no need to have the, the value provider class uh, in your implementation. And on the other hand side, you would be able to create a dynamic job graph where you have, for instance, different IO connectors uh, as an input based on certain parameters that are submitted whenever the uh, template gets executed. There is also uh, a pre-built template library um, that is available in the Google Cloud Console um, that it helps you get data from A to B, so especially for point-to-point -point transfers or utility helper functionality, for instance, formatting uh, or changing the format of files from uh, CSV to Avro, for instance. Um, and whenever you want to run such a, a template, you are also able um, to define a UDF, a user-defined function. Uh, for instance, if you want to move uh, a file from uh, cloud storage, from the object store, so we're talking about a file, to a database, um, you're able to define your own user-defined function in JavaScript. Uh, for the mapping, for instance. All those libraries are available on GitHub uh, and they are actively developed. So whenever you have the need to do certain data processing tasks, it would be great to, to look first at the, at the templates library because then if there is already a template that does the job, there is no need to develop the the whole pipeline uh, by yourself. In the Google Cloud Console, it would like look like the following. Whenever you go to the data flow page, you have the option. Uh, there is a button, button saying create job from template. Um, whenever you click on it, you, you end up uh, on a view like that, where you're able to select what template you want. You select a regional endpoint and you add a name. And then you can also define 
optional parameters if you would like. There are three types of pre-built templates available. On the one hand side, we do have templates for streaming data, so where data needs to be continuously processed. Um, there are templates for batch pipelines whenever you process data in a bulk, whenever you are, for instance, processing a file. And there are, as I said, utility templates available as well that help you, for instance, compress the file, that let you change the format of files, and so on. To close the presentation, I want to show you a demo. But before we do so, I want to show you the repository of the the templates, which is called Dataflow Templates. Um, and as you nav navigate uh, through the README, you see the, the templates that are available to you. So we have the streaming templates. We have a getting started word count example. We have the batch pipelines, batch templates that, that you can use. And then you have the utility templates that you can use. If you want to run a Dataflow template, you have to navigate to the Dataflow page in the Google Cloud Console. If you want to do it visually, you can also do it via a uh, REST call or command line. But in a visual way, you have to navigate to the Dataflow page, click on jobs, and then select the button create job from template. And then you are redirected to a page that looks like this. You are asked to enter a job name. You have to select a regional endpoint. And then you have to select the Dataflow template that you want to use. In our case, I want to convert uh, my SCSV file into the Avro format. So there are a few required parameters that need to be entered. Um, first, I have to add the, the file format uh, of the input file and the output file. So I have a CSV as an input. I have an Avro file as an output. I have to specify the the file pattern that has to be read. So I can specify one or multiple files. I have to specify the output directory where the results are stored. And then I have to specify a schema file for uh, the, the conversion of the data into the other format. Once that is done and the information is entered, we can scroll down and click on Run Job. And we are going to be redirected to the Jobs page where um, once the job is started, we should see the, the tree of the job. And at the end, the job status should be uh, succeeded. Once the, the job is succeeded and done, we see uh, a page like that where we see uh, the status, what job type it was, uh, what the elapsed time was, how many CPUs, memory, and storage have been used, and we see the pipeline options at the bottom. If we now navigate to the cloud storage bucket, we see that there is the input file uh, called template CSV, there is the, the schema file for Avro, and then there is the output file that has been generated by the pipeline. So you can use whatever um, template is available. So it doesn't have to be uh, like a conversion. You can use it for st constantly streaming data into uh, a database, for instance. Or you can use it to move batch data from A to B. Dat data flow templates are quite uh, helpful, especially if you have to do point-to-point -point transfers for, for your data. Um, by just doing uh, small uh, manipulations. They, they help you quite a lot, saving time and effort developing them. I hope you enjoyed the presentation about Dataflow templates. And I hope you can leverage templates in the future, either by using the pre-built templates or by developing your own custom templates. Thank you.